okay, deep down inside, I know Islam to be true. But one of the biggest problems that I have, I've been asked this question, one of the biggest problems I have is why are we so different from everybody else? How come I have so many restrictions and my friends get to do this and that? How come my parents tell me, know this and know that and you can't do this and you can't do that? And everybody around me is doing everything and I'm the odd one out in my class. I'm the only one in my school, I'm the only one in my group of peers, I'm the only one in my circle of friends that is not allowed to do this and do that and I have these restrictions. Why is Islam so restrictive? Why do I have to be so different from everybody else? And that is a very good question. And it's also a very difficult question. And the answer will require a little bit of maturity on your parts. But you will understand it if you think about it. Listen, my dear brothers and sisters. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ وَلَوْ حَرَصْتَ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ The majority of mankind, they don't want to be guided. Allah says in the Quran, وَإِن تُطِعْ أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُضِلُّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ If you follow the majority of people, they're not going to guide you to the right path. Allah says in the Quran, the majority of people want to live like animals. إِنْ هُمْ إِلَّا كَالْأَنْعَامِ Allah says most of mankind don't want to have higher goals. They just want to live their lives in hedonism, in pleasures of the body. And our religion is a religion of nobility and purpose. We are not animals. We are more than animals. We have spirit, we have ruh, we have intellect. It's not just religion. Any successful human being has to break the trend. Any successful human being has to break free from the crowd. Even, even people that have nothing to do with religion, but are successful in this world. Do you think Steve Jobs? Do you think Bill Gates? Do you think anybody who's successful in this world was an average student in all that they did? Did they just go with the flow? You want to be a leader? And Islam wants you to be a leader, at least in the next world. You want to be a trailblazer? You want to be somebody who genuinely stands up from the crowd? Well, you're going to have to make your impact from now. If you follow the rest of the cattle, if you go along with the rest of the sheep, you're not going to get anywhere. But you want to rise up and become the shepherd. You want to rise up and lead the flock. Then you're going to have to show charisma. You're going to have to show integrity. You're going to have to show courage. And that's not easy. But wallahi, that's what our religion wants. Our religion wants good for us in this world and in the next. Why is Islam so restrictive? Why is Islam so difficult? Maybe ask yourselves, why are the rest of mankind so easy going with their own lives when they know that their lifestyles are harmful? Classic example, we're living in 2014, right? When I was growing up in the 80s, Cigarettes didn't have that label on them that you all know about. When I was growing up, cigarettes were still marketed as being cool for the young, for the adults. Cigarettes were basically something that you did as a fashion, as a fad. Well, in the 90s, as most of you know, the government studies, whatnot, it all found out that cigarettes is the leading cause of cancer. Cigarettes is the leading cause of this, of that. And you're just inhaling that which is going to kill you. So. You're allowed legally to purchase cigarettes, but what's on the warning label? This product will kill you. Isn't that so foolish? Think about it. The government requires us to, to put our safety belts on. Yet the number of deaths of cigarettes far outnumbers that from car accidents. Yet we're allowed to buy cigarettes. Why? Well, because morality is different for other people. For us, our religion teaches us that which is harmful, it's not allowed for you. Every prohibition coming from our religion is one that is meant for our own good. Drugs, alcohol, pornography, uh, premarital sex, all of these things destroy one's character, destroy one's integrity, destroy one's pure psychology. So our religion has forbidden it because it is for our own good. And I swear by Allah, if you are faithful to your religion, you will realize pleasures far greater than the pleasures that you are giving up. Our Prophet ﷺ said in an authentic hadith, whoever gives up anything for the sake of Allah, Allah will give him more than what he gave up. Whoever gives up anything for the sake of Allah, Allah will give him better than what he gave up. And you are still young, it is difficult for you to understand this. But I gave the example of the cigarettes and everyone knows cigarettes are harmful. Similarly, everything that the Sharia ah forbids, whether it is drugs, whether it is dating, whether it is this, whether it is that, realize that there is harm in it for us. And Allah says in the Quran, this religion, is a religion that The religion allows things that are pure for people and it forbids things that are impure. Our religion is restrictive. 
because Allah wants us to flourish. Our religion is restrictive in some sense because Allah wants good for us in this world and in the next. And there must be an element of trust and an element of hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 